One of the ways teachers use the reports in iReady the most is to really drill down and identify which skills students are missing. That's really the power of the adaptive iReady diagnostic is that it's able to go across grade levels and down to the skill level to really identify what's causing our students to struggle. Most teachers are great at identifying students who are behind and they know that they're struggling with reading or they know that they're struggling in math. Quite often what they're not sure about is why. And what we find is that these students could have missed skills two, three, four grades earlier and that's what's causing them to still fall behind. iReady takes the guesswork out of that and makes teachers' jobs much easier by providing very detailed reports that spell out the individual skills and provide resources to help teachers know exactly what to teach and what support to provide. So today we are going to look at the student profile report. So when we go to login.i-ready.com and we use our teacher username and password and we log in, as we get to our home page, again, we're going to go under that reports tab. So you'll find your green reports tab at the top. And here we want to look at an individual student. So we look at student reports and we want to go down to student profile. In this case, we're going to have to go in and select a student. I'm going to select math this time. We're going to have to select a class first and then a student. We hit create report. And we come to the student profile report. So in this case, this is showing us Jasmine. Jasmine is a third grade student. Across the top, you'll see our tabs. So as a reminder, iReady is a tab-driven system. As you begin to navigate through, quite often you'll scroll down and start looking at all the great detail that's here, and the tabs will disappear. So as a quick little tip, anytime you get lost and you can't really figure out how to navigate to other information or more information, look to see if there's a scroll bar and go back to the top. So in this case, we have a separate tab for each of the domains that we assess in math, numbers and operations, algebra, measurements and data, and geometry. Let's look at this overview tab. This gives us a lot of great information. This is a great tab to use if I were going to have a sit down conversation with my administrator about Jasmine, I'd probably pull up this overview tab because it's going to give me some quick information on how she's doing. In this case, I see that her overall performance is early third grade. So she's just getting into this level that we would consider her own grade level. As I look at this below, I can see that in numbers and operations and geometry, she's doing pretty well, but she's a little bit behind in algebra and measurements and data. And that's probably what's keeping her down into this early range of being considered on grade level. So I already have some great detail and great information about Jasmine and where she might be struggling. If I want to dive into this more deeply, I would probably start at algebra. Numbers and operations in algebra are the more foundational skills in math. And that's what we use as we're looking at uh, the individual students. We're going to start with those two domains first and provide support there. So when I click on the algebra domain tab, it reminds me again how she did specifically in that domain. She's a grade level behind. And as I scroll down, it gives me some great information here. What can Jasmine do? Here's her present level of performance. These are the skills that Jasmine has likely shown mastery of through the diagnostic. Anywhere you see this little CC button, if you click on that, it will give you the specific common core standard that she's shown mastery of. So as we prepare IEPs or any reports, this is a great list of skills that we can use to show Jasmine's present level of performance. Over on the right, we outline what do we need to do next with Jasmine. And these skills are listed based on where she's ready to go next. And they're going to vary by domain. In this case, 
algebra and algebraic thinking, we can see that she needs to work on writing, solving, and using addition to check subtraction number sentences, solve subtraction problems for comparison situations, etc. Any of these domains will work the same. We'll be shown what she can do, and we'll be given next steps for instruction, what she needs to work on. As we get to the bottom and we scroll down past those next steps for instruction, we're presented with tools for instruction. These are intervention lesson plans that are provided at the instructional level that Jasmine is needing, and they're designed to help teachers teach these skills, especially as you move up into the higher grades, fifth, sixth, seventh grade. In math, we'll see quite often that students are really missing third or fourth grade numbers, number sense. So this makes it really easy for teachers who might not be comfortable teaching those lower level skills to go back and have the right support that they need. So if I open up one of these PDFs, it's going to present me with a short lesson the objective here is to model multiplication. It tells me any materials that I might need. These manipulatives are all typically uh, very common manipulatives that would already be found in the classroom. You're not going to need anything special to use these lesson plans. And then a step-by-step, -step, what do I do? What do I say? How do I model this for this student? Typically, these lessons are 20 to 30 minutes. And one of the things that I really like about these tools for instruction is that there's always this check for understanding section at the end, which we find is super helpful for teachers and they really appreciate this, especially in math with some of the shifts in the common core. Teachers may not always be as comfortable teaching these skills and this helps the teacher as well. So if I see that the student is writing five plus six instead of five times six, it may be that they don't understand the difference between addition, and multiplication. So I can use some counters to go back and try to reteach that. These individual student reports drill down and provide specific information in each of the domains. If I were to go back and run a reading report for Jasmine, it's going to look very similar in this case, you'll see that I have different domains. I have the reading domains, phonological awareness, phonics, high-frequency words, vocabulary, and then the two comprehension tabs. Those are all going to work exactly the same. I also have a Lexile performance tab. And in reading, this is an awesome little parent connection component. In this Lexile tab, I can provide my parents with a way to go and find books that are at the exact level that their student might need. And they can go in and specifically sort by different categories and show them books that would be available in their local libraries, through Barnes & Noble, on Amazon, um, any books that are going to specifically deal with those types of things. Okay, So again, the student profile reports are great for drilling down and really finding out the specific skills that students need to work on to help you as a teacher know when I have five minutes with Jasmine what can I do to make the biggest impact and get the biggest bang for my buck we tell you specifically what she needs to work on next and we provide you tools to help you reteach those skills